Hello and welcome everyone. I'd like to welcome you to this session on the theater of the body, a digital exhibit walkthrough. This session will provide an introduction and a tour of the digital exhibit entitled Theater of the Body, a Renaissance of Human Anatomy. The exhibit and this session is part of the USAHS Library's ongoing digital exhibit series, which aims to engage the university community and advance the discourse regarding the sociocultural impact of medicine. The theater of the body exhibit in particular represents the historical origins of human anatomy with a collection of anatomical illustrations from the European Renaissance. I am Matthew Chase, the San Marcos campus librarian and also curator of this exhibit. The agenda of this session is to touch on the complicated and even controversial contexts surrounding the development of human anatomy throughout history. We will cover evidence of ancient anatomy, the overlooked gaps in the anatomical record, the medical renaissance in Europe, and the technological advances in anatomical illustration, as well as the ethical issues of human cadaver dissection. The medical advances and theories of ancient Greece would have a lasting influence on the development of human anatomy across nearly two millennia. The systematic understandings of the human body via dissection did not initially gain ground though, and anatomists instead relied upon knowledge gained from minor surgeries and animal dissections. Dissection was at the time frowned upon for religious, moral, and cultural reasons. The first known ancient Greek physicians to perform systematic cadaver dissections established a school of medicine in Alexandria, benefiting from their connections to ancient Greek royalty as they regularly received bodies of executed prisoners for scientific discovery. Soon after their deaths, ancient Greek practitioners considered the academic practice of human dissection to be without scientific merit favoring instead empirical observation and texts of the past as the basis of anatomic knowledge. Aristotle, a prominent natural scientist of his time, is often regarded as the one to first pioneer anatomy as a specialized field of knowledge and study. While there is no evidence that he dissected human cadavers himself, he instead performed systematic examination of animal bodies. His contributions paved the way for the disciplines of comparative anatomy and human anatomy as we know them today. Aristotle's innovative anatomic techniques allowed for the development of the principles in scientific description, observation, and language. His structural examination of organs and body parts remain premier examples of anatomical study. Galen would come to impact the field of human anatomy for well over 1500 years after his death. He created the experimental method in medical investigation developed by his anatomical investigation of animal bodies. He made several significant discoveries ranging from the presentation of the spine to the function of arteries in the body. He would come to organize the wealth of medical knowledge up to that point in history, including the influence of other Greek practitioners such as Hippocrates, along with his own anatomical discoveries. The emergence of Christianity in Europe during the Middle Ages would lead religious and political authorities to prohibit the practice of cadav human cadaver dissection. The Western medical community instead relied upon Aristotelian and Galenic theories to guide their clinical practices. It would not be until the European Renaissance in the early 14th century AD that these ancient anatomist traditions would be challenged, including the scientific value of human cadaver dissection. While the study of human anatomy is well known for its emergence in ancient Greece and Renaissance Europe, there are often untold gaps in the history of anatomy particularly beyond the West. Galen and Aristotle are typically considered the fathers of anatomy, and yet their work derived a great deal from the medical and clinical anatomy theories of ancient Egypt. Just as important, the gaps in the timeline of anatomy's development between ancient Greece and Renaissance Europe are largely left unexplored. 
leaving the impression that anatomy as a medical and academic discipline remained stagnant until the times of Vesalius, da Vinci, and more modern contemporaries. Historians have started paying closer attention now to the significant contributions to anatomy made by Arabic, Muslim, and Persian scholars. While ancient Greek anatomists like Galen had only dissected animal bodies, human cadaver dissection was commonplace in Persia as far back as 10th millennium BC. The Islamic golden age between 8th century AD and 14th century AD introduced major advances in anatomy, advancing and even correcting popular Galenic theory. Arabic anatomists adapted ancient Greek science into their anatomy education, but ultimately improved the theories and knowledge traditions. It was a Persian anatomist who created the, the world's first colored human anatomy atlas in the 14th century AD. Religious objections to human dissection were raised with the emergence of Islam, but anatomists continue to use animals as their primary sources, as their primary sources of study. The influence of other cultures such as China and India cannot be denied as well. Indian culture developed a focus on anatomy education after the 7th century BC. Physicians were trained to systematically dissect human cadavers, gaining precise and accurate knowledge about the organs, joints and ligaments, and nerve structures. The introduction of Buddhism, while supporting the advancement of medicine, ultimately led to a prohibition of human cadaver dissection. Indian anatomists maintained a close collaborative partnership with their Arabic counterparts during the Middle Ages. Both groups actively translated each other's textual works of anatomy. Human cadaver dissection would be later reintroduced into Indian anatomy education around the 16th century AD under the Portuguese. Prompted by the European Renaissance at this time, the Portuguese believed human dissection to be imperative for medical advancement. Between the 3rd century AD and 13th century AD, the Western study of anatomy remained focused on Galenic texts and theories. Human cadaver dissection was prohibited during this period. Anatomical illustration had not been established yet until the late Middle Ages, and even then the earliest illustrative examples were still based on Galenic writings and often inaccurate as a result. By the turn of the 14th century AD, there was a growing movement within the medical community to challenge this traditional approach to medicine as well as anatomy. In the beginning, Northern Italy was known as the center of this medical renaissance. Human cadaver dissection made its return in the latter half of the 13th century AD, initially with the forensic postmortem examinations for legal purposes and, sub and subsequently with the first public dissection at a prestigious Bologna Medical School around 1300 AD. The larger medical community still supported the Galenic approach to anatomy, which limited its study to a solely academic framework rather than a clinical practice. Galenic traditions remained strong up until the 16th century AD. Attempts to present the inaccuracies in Galenic theories and texts were dismissed as anatomical deformities in the dissected human body, instead of flaws in Western anatomical knowledge traditions at that time. This support for tradition can be seen in the works of Charles Esting. Esting may have been the first to publish illustrations of the whole external venous and nervous system descriptions of the morphology and purpose of quote-unquote feeding holes of bones and the composition of the sternum. The woodcut shown here demonstrates the discoveries made to the skeletal and muscular structures, yet Galenic traditions of medicine, anatomy, and surgery greatly influenced Charles Esteen's work. And his hesitation to challenge such traditions allowed for other anatomists to pioneer new frontiers in the study of human anatomy. The value of Esteen's contribution, though, stands without contest regarding his revolutionary discoveries. Andreas Vesalius would become historically known as the leading figure to establish the practice of human anatomy as a legitimate modern medical science. 
Sometimes regarded as the founder of modern human anatomy, Vesalius was originally a student of Galenic teachings before challenging the current limitations of anatomical knowledge. Attending public dissections, Vesalius had also actively stole and examined bodies from mass graves of the unclaimed dead, as well as executed prisoners from the gallows. After becoming a lecturer at the famous University of Padua, he performed his first human cadaver dissections. He transformed the role of the anatomy teacher as both a demonstrator and a dissector. An avid supporter and contributor to anatomical illustration, Vesalius achieved global fame and notoriety in 1543 AD with his anatomy text, De Humani Corporis Fabrica, or also known as the On the Fabric of the Human Body, critically evaluating the accuracy and value of Galenic teachings. The text was also transformative for its collaboration among Vesalius as the author, as well as with the artists, the woodblock cutters, and the publishing staff to produce this in-depth work of scientific discourse and illustration, which had never been accomplished before. The woodcut shown on the right here was one of the many famous illustrations contained in Vesalius's Fabrica. The open chest cavity reveals the ribs and the vertebrae. As was typical of his anatomical illustrations, Vesalius depicted the body in unique positions reflecting the human condition. In this case, having the body lean against the stone wall. The woodcut shown in the middle is representative of the text's physiological and philosophical approach to anatomy, depicting a skeleton hanging from a post with a natural landscape in the background, the skeletal and muscular structures being exposed. The study of anatomy is grounded strongly in the principles of systematic scientific analysis and experimentation. The meaningful power and art behind an anatomical illustration cannot be readily dismissed. Understanding the anatomy and the physiology of a human body would be very difficult to do unless one had firsthand experience in observing or performing a dissection. The anatomical illustration serves three special functions within this context. First, the illustration allows for clarification of the anatomic object in one's mind. Second, the illustration facilitates the transmission of ideas, whether it is in a classroom, a personal conversation, or an academic journal article. During the Renaissance, anatomists and artists would depict highly accurate and detailed representations of the human body, but they would also often stylize them in dramatized postures or positions, even within the context of a natural backdrop. During the classical period, between 700 BC and 680, anatomical illustration did not yet exist. Observing the teaching principles of Galen, anatomists instead relied upon text-based descriptions of the human anatomy. It was not until the late Middle Ages when an Italian physician first pioneered the art of illustration in the anatomical sciences with drawings of neuroanatomical structures based on written accounts from Hippocrates and Galen. This physician prompted a dramatic evolution in the study of anatomy, popularizing the use of illustration. The European Renaissance centuries later would witness significant advances in both anatomical thought and illustration technologies. While illustrations from the late Middle Ages primarily consisted of handmade drawings, the printing press provided a unique opportunity to diversify the illustration and representation of human anatomy through woodcuts, plate and wood engravings, and etchings. Artists, woodblock cutters, and engravers became essential partners for anatomists in disseminating anatomical knowledge. The introduction of these printing technologies allowed for anatomists to produce printed books that combine both textual information and companion illustrations, dramatically enhancing the teachings of anatomy. Leonardo da Vinci, renowned today for his art masterpieces, had been keenly interested in the study of human anatomy. His work would greatly influence modern anatomical thought, especially in the realm of illustration. His precise observations of human dissection and highly skilled artistic ability produce a variety of influential illustrations of reproductive systems, extremity structures, and skeletal representation, rendering the human body at multiple points of view, achieving as close to a three-dimensional model as possible at the time, allowing a person to fully view and learn the human body. 
The impact of da Vinci's work in anatomy would be observed centuries after his death, even in the works of 18th century anatomists. Michelangelo, also known more for his architectural accomplishments, had been personally invested in the theory and study of human anatomy. This lifelong interest, beginning in his teen years, would even come to be reflected in his work in architecture and painting. Michelangelo actively participated in public human cadaver dissections, and it is believed he may have even aspired to become a anatomical scholar himself. Michelangelo had also been involved at some point in collaborating on an on a anatomy text, contributing artistic illustrations of anatomic structures, although it is currently unknown whether Michelangelo was able to follow through with the work. The unauthorized duplication and plagiarism of anatomy texts, particularly the illustrations, was very common during the Renaissance. The works of Vesalius and other leading anatomists were often reproduced without their permission or without credit. Many anatomists would duplicate these works, passing them off as their own to, to bolster their own professional reputations. Some publishers and printers would also take advantage, pirating and reprinting anatomy texts for their own profit. A side effect to this rampant plagiarism is that it did allow for rapid dissemination of information to a wider readership, reinforcing the revolutionary shift in the study of modern human anatomy. The anatomical illustration displayed here is from Gavard Bidlou, an, an Italian anatomist from the 17th century. This engraving was part of Bidlou's anatomy text. It shows an arm wrapped around a book with its skin flayed to reveal the muscles and bones underneath. Although it remained his most famous work, Bidlou's text and its engraved plates did not achieve much financial success. The publisher would later sell these plates to another anatomist. From the Renaissance to today, the tools of anatomical illustration have improved exponentially as we would come to be more familiar with the technologies of lithography, photography, x-ray imaging, and even digital imaging, providing a deeper understanding of the human body. From the times of ancient Egypt and Greece to the 19th century Western world, anatomists had depended on the bodies of executed people, bodies acquired through grave robbing, unclaimed deceased in poor houses and hospitals, murder victims and suicides as their main sources of research. As the study of human anatomy became a more legitimate and prevalent science during the Renaissance, the demand grew for legalization of dissection and perhaps more importantly, a legal source of human bodies. At this point in history, bodies of the executed became the legal primary source for anatomical dissection. Bodies of the executed were considered prime research material because they were often young and healthy and the details of death were documented. Public human cadaver dissections were increasingly commonplace during the Renaissance and general audiences perceived dissection as a great dishonor, a violation on the dissected which made their bodies unfit for a funeral. In the centuries that followed the Renaissance, governments would use this public perception as a crime deterrent. Dissection being a medical practice versus a retributive practice blurred. Horrific examples would emerge during the mass executions and dissections in Nazi Germany and in the Soviet Union. While the contemporary use of bodies of the executed has greatly decreased as a result of abolition movements against capital punishment and the creation of body donation programs, there continue to be documented cases of using such bodies for anatomical research, including the United States and China. As health practitioners and scientists, what are the lessons to be learned from our collective and complicated history as anatomists? While the modern legalization of human cadaver dissection introduced significant advances, it also raises important questions about how we represent the human body in relation to the human being. How do we make sense of anatomists' role in how human bodies have been used for political purposes such as criminal justice and even genocide? Although dissection has become increasingly more academic and clinical, how have illustration technologies changed our perception and ethics of the human body? Renaissance illustrations would often dramatize the human condition, whereas contemporary illustrations have observed the increasing 
abstraction of the human cadaver as existing independently of its personhood and humanity. What roles and responsibilities do health professionals and anatomists have in potentially rehumanizing the science of human anatomy? Consider these questions as food for thought and transformative action. Following this tour through the exhibit and our anatomical history, I also want to bring up how the library and other institutions are working to support health professionals with various resources and tools to promote evidence-based medicine. I want to first highlight Visible Body, which is a comprehensive 3D online atlas of the human body. There's also the Acklands Video Atlas of Human Anatomy. The video atlas comprises of hundreds of high quality videos for review and as an alternative to cadaver dissection. Anatomy texts and atlases have rapidly advanced since the Renaissance with increasing accuracy and detailed representations of the human body. The library also supports a wide array of anatomy related ebooks in particular with titles such as Frank H. Netter's Atlas of Anatomy and Gray's Anatomy for Students. All of these resources and more are available through the library website. I hope this virtual tour inspired knowledge and thought about the sociocultural impact of medicine. You can discover more about the digital exhibit on our library website. The link is provided in the description below. Please feel free to share and discuss what you've learned here. Thank you for your time.